You can do today, uh, the simplest example of combustion is the following for ignition. You have a, a jet of methane here into air. So it's exactly what would happen if I open this thing here, I will have a jet of methane into air. And the question which was raised here and studied experimentally by a few people, and we did an LES here, a large dissimulation of this problem, is the following. If I put a spark here, will it ignite or not? So I will show you three positions where we put spark. A spark very close to the jet, a spark here, and a spark downstream. So this is the case where the spark is very close to the jet here. The spark is here, and what you see is the temperature. And you can see here that ignition takes place. You see the flame is not starting here. The flame is what we call lifted. There is a zone here in which there is no flame. Mixing is taking place. I will come back to that later. And then the flame is stabilized here. So this is an example where you ignite the flame, and it works, and you get ignition. Another example here where we put the, the, the spark much more downstream here. It's a bit too, mo too far downstream, as you will see. You get ignition. You see there is something igniting, but the flow is going too fast. So the flame is igniting, but it's propagating downstream. Eventually it will go away and stop. So in this case, you can have a spark here. You won't be able to ignite this, uh, this, uh, this jet. The last case is corresponds to the, exactly to the point which is the limit. And here you will have the experiment. <coughs> and here you have the simulation. And you will see here that the flame is kind of hesitating. It's thinking, well, maybe I should propagate or not. So it's exactly, this is the reason why we are close to the limit. And you will see after a while, the flame will propagate and come back to its position here. Being able to predict this ignition is very important, uh, as I said, for safety, and also to understand the fundamental mechanisms in this system. If you cannot predict here how ignition takes place, you won't be able to do it in what I'm going to show you now, which is a real engine. So when the thing is ignited, of course, it comes back to the same point as before. The question is, does it ignite or not? So now, I want to talk about helicopter engines a little bit. Helicopter engines are a different story. You don't reignite an helicopter engine. Uh, if, the engine if the engine stops, you fall. Okay, that's, uh, that's the general idea. But uh, you have to do something different with an helicopter engine. You have to be, to be able to start your engine on the ground, but also on a mountain. And it's a very important aspect of helicopters, for example, for safety, they have to go up on a mountain at five, 6,000 meters. You have to be able to stop the engine and reignite it. And uh, things get complicated. If you think about, uh, uh, you go to India and you stop on a mountain at 5,000 meters, if you stop long enough, the, the, the engine will be cold, but the batteries will be cold, and the fuel will be frozen. Okay, and now if you're working for Turbomeca, for example, they ask you, okay, now I want to reignite this thing. Uh, usually it's a tough work. One reason why it's difficult is that if the pressure is low uh, and uh, the atomization of the fuel is uh, very bad, it's very difficult to make sure that you're going to be able to ignite one sector here and propagate towards the others. You have seen that in a real combustion chamber, we have sectors, many of them, and usually we don't put sparks everywhere. We use injectors at some point, and then we hope that the flame will propagate to the other points. And if these things work, you will see here it, how it happens. You're looking at an engine from the combustion chamber here. It's like you're sitting on the turbine, and you will see how ignition proceeds here. There is only one, one point for ignition here. You see the ignition started here, and then it propagated like this, and then the whole system was ignited. Uh, let me play it again. So this is an experiment. The main problem for, for people building helicopter engines is that you do that on the ground and it works. You do that at 2,000 meters and it works. You do that at 4,000 meters and then suddenly the flame starts and stops here. Or starts and goes there and stops again. And then you need to add a second ignition system. But you don't want to do that because it's heavy. On a helicopter, you know, the weight is really what you don't want to take with you. So it's a problem. You need to be able to predict when you will have propagation of this flame. So now it's not only a problem of igniting the first sector, it's a problem of knowing whether the flame will be able to jump to the other sectors. And that makes things interesting again for combustion science. So I'm just going to show you a computation here which was done um, two years ago on a full chamber, so that's a complete combustion chamber of uh, Turbomeca, where you have all these igniters here, all these uh, injectors, excuse me, which are injecting kerosene and air, and you have one igniter at the top, which is a jet of hot gases, and one igniter at the bottom, which is another jet of hot gases. 
And the question is, will this thing ignite or not? So, um, in this case, it ignites. We picked up a case where ignition takes place. So you have here, the blue zones correspond to high velocity. You have the injection here, you have the dilution jets. Here you have the hot injectors, these two guys here. And what is yellow is the place where reaction rate takes place. And so you see that reaction starts near the place where you inject and it starts propagating to the neighboring points. So let me show you the end of the movie now. So same thing here, you see combustion starting now, propagating, jumping to an, from one burner to another. It takes about 20 to 40 milliseconds to do that. This is a case where things happen the way they should. It does not always happen like this, but when you have the simulation, you can understand why things don't propagate or do propagate. This is the same thing now. We're trying to understand how the hot zones propagate from one burner to another. We're going to travel with that. You have here the hot zone. This is an isosurface of temperature. And we're going to follow it. Now it's, you see this part is hot. This is cold. And now we're traveling with the flame. And you see the flame is jumping from one injector to another. And finally, it will meet the other flame, which is turning in the other direction. combustion, as I said, can be interesting. As you can see here, you get a nice mixture of transport, turbulence, chemistry, everything at the same time. An aircraft, this is an engine coming from SNECMA. Same problem, we need to ignite it. So here, as you can see, the design is completely different. You get injection of kerosene here, dilution jet, and the spark plug is located here. When you try to ignite this thing, this is what, happen what happens. You get the first spark and nothing happens. Then you will see there will be a second spark, and then this one will be able to produce uh, combustion. And after a while, the flame will get stabilized. And again, this is what we study for reignition. So you get two examples here. Okay, I'm almost reaching the end of this introduction. Just to give you some uh, background here, uh, I'm sure you're going to work a lot on this course at home. So to do that, you can do a few things that and said to get. Uh, uh, 20 or 25 copies of the book here. This is the textbook where you will find almost everything I've said. Uh, you can also buy it on Amazon the, you, if you really want. But you can get it for free if you go to this address here. And at the same place, you will also find multiple tutorials and, and documents on the course itself. You will even find controls and exams on, can you can, on which you can work. Uh, this is just a view of the website. When you go there, you're gonna, you can look, for example, this introduction will be here, and then the next courses, you will find them here. You also have some certain tools that you can use uh, to train and to understand uh, applications of uh, what I've been describing here.